What if I told you that you could build your own desktop OS like UI in Next.js? Yes, you heard me. Next.js, the same framework you use to over-engineer your blog website. What you're seeing on the screen is exactly what we will have by the end of this tutorial. Your users will be able to drag and drop files and folders, open up as many windows as they want, and have a cluttered desktop space just like their own PC. Let's go ahead and build it. For this particular project, the files are acting as bookmarks that open a URL in a new tab. You can use this project as an old school bookmark manager. I don't like to write code line by line on the screen in my tutorials. We're all familiar with how to structure a Next.js, Tailwind CSS, Shad CN UI project, and we know where everything should go. So it's much more efficient if I just go over how this certain project has been built and how it has been designed. I have put a link in the description of this video to my GitHub repository where you can clone the entire thing, add this project to your portfolio and never mention my name anywhere. So let's see what we have here. In the app directory, we have a single root. The layout file only uses the theme provider from Next Themes and the sidebar provider from Shad CN. The page file only imports our desktop wrapper component. Let's open up the desktop folder inside the component folder. First file we're going to go through is the, the desktop wrapper component. This is the main entry file that takes up the entire screen and creates everything. Here we see that everything is wrapped inside two providers. First one is DND provider from the React DND library. Second is our desktop context that handles the state of files in our simulated file system. The context provider file is very minimal as it just creates a context using the return type of our hook. This hook manages everything from file and folder states to open windows, modals, and clipboard operations. Let's break it down section by section. First section is state management. We declare several state variables using React's use state hook. Item state holds our desktop elements like files and folders. We initialize it with some default items. The type for these variables are defined in the type folder. Each item has properties like ID, name, contents, which could be an array of items itself, location, ID, and a path. Let's go back to the use desktop hook. Windows is an array that keeps track of all the open windows. Imagine when you double click a folder and a new window appears. Modal state manages our modal dialogues for actions like creating a new file or renaming a folder. Clipboard is used to store an item along with the operation type, which could be copy or cut. We also create a ref for our desktop container. The next section is our two use effect hooks. This first effect simply logs the contents of our clipboard state whenever the clipboard changes, a handy tool for debugging. The second effect ensures that our open windows always reflect the most up-to-date state of their associated items. Whenever our item's state changes, we update each window accordingly by refetching the item data using the helper function, find item by ID. In the next section, we have a couple of helper function, which I'm not going to go over as their titles are self-explanatory. What I'm going to go over are the clipboard operations as they are a key part of our desktop OS simulation. Let's start with the handle cut and handle copy functions. These functions set the clipboard state with the selected item and mark whether the operation is a cut or a copy. Next, we have the paste function. Notice that the only parameter it accepts is the target location ID. We are not passing in the item itself in as we have a clipboard state. We know we have to paste the item which is currently in our clipboard. This function first checks to make sure you're not pasting an item into its own location. It then removes the item from its original position and reinserts it in the new location, showing a success message via a toast notification. Next section is modal operations. When it comes to creating or editing items like files and folders, we rely on our modal system. This function handles both creating new items and editing existing ones. Based on the modal state, this function either creates a new file or folder or renames slash edits an existing one, updating the item's state recursively and ensuring paths are correctly recalculated. After completing the operation, it resets the modal state. Next section is window operations. Open window opens a new window when a user double clicks a folder. Creating a new window requires a couple of properties, including a unique ID, a folder item ID to attach and load contents from, size and a position, which will be offset just like in Windows desktops because we don't want them to render exactly on top of each other. These other functions are much simpler. They manage closing, minimizing, and moving windows on the screen. Finally, this hook also includes utility functions like delete item and clear clipboard. 
Delete item recursively removes an item from the items tree and closes any open windows associated with it. Clear clipboard resets the clipboard and handle empty space. Right click prevents default context menu behavior on empty spaces. That's it, we've gone over the entire use desktop hook file. Let's go back to the desktop wrapper file and continue where we left off. Inside the context provider component, we have a simple div that we've passed the reference from our hook into. Inside it, we'll finally start finding our actual components. First one is the sidebar. Sidebar and tree TSX files create this neat sidebar in the corner that shows a tree-like structure of our simulated file system. The sidebar itself is from Shadchan UI. The tree inside it is made up of collapsible components from Shadchan UI that recursively traverse an item and items inside it. Let's go back to the wrapper component. We've passed down the item's state from our hook directly into this sidebar component and it will be re-rendered every time the item's state changes. We want the entirety of our desktop space that takes up all the screen to be right-clickable so we can get the context menu whenever we want. That's why we use the empty space context menu here and it will wrap every component we see on the main screen inside it. Empty space context menu is self-explanatory. It manages the context menu and its operations like new folder, new file, and paste. Here we have the dot pattern component from Magic UI, which just adds a little bit of visual interest. Below it, we have our drag and drop area component. Let's see what it is. Drag and drop area is responsible for handing drag and drop operations. It uses the React DND library and takes up the screen in our desktop space and the space inside folder windows. When this component is initiated, we pass inside it all items that it should contain from our simulated file system. Here we map through them and create desktop item components. Each desktop item component is either a folder or a file in our desktop environment. It is made up of a button, its name and its icon, which do something if we left click on it, this context menu if we right click on it. Let's go back to the original wrapper component and continue where we left off. We also need a way to create the small windows on the screen. Here's how we achieve this. We access the latest contents of the windows state from our hook then we map over it and create as many draggable window components as we need draggable window is responsible for handling opening closing and moving around these small windows on our screen in terms of state and context it uses local state to track whether the window is currently being dragged is dragging and stores the starting point of the drag drag start it also pulls in functions from the desktop context such as close window minimize window and move window in terms of dragging functionality when you press down on the Windows header, handle mouse down, the component marks the start of a drag and calculates the offset between your mouse click and the Windows top left corner. As you move your mouse, the handle mouse move function updates the Windows position using the move window function. When you release the mouse button, handle mouse up stops the dragging. The component listens for mouse move and mouse up events on the entire window when dragging starts and cleans up those event listeners once dragging stops. Let's go back to the wrapper component. Inside the draggable window, we put the empty space context menu and drag and drop area components. Notice we are passing in each window's item content as a prop as this is the component responsible for rendering items. All that's left to explain is the modal component. This is the modal menu that handles naming and renaming folders and items. In terms of state and references, it uses local state, name and link to manage the input values for the item's name and URL. It uses a ref input ref to automatically focus on the name input when the modal opens. In terms of context integration, it pulls in modal state, set modal state, and handle item operation from our desktop context. This context tells the modal whether it should be open, what type of item is being handled, folder or file, ach, bookmark, and what action to perform, new, edit, or rename. In terms of effect hook, when the modal opens, the component sets the initial values of the name and link fields based on the current item, if any, from modal state. It then focuses on the name input automatically. In terms of form submission, when the form is submitted, it checks if the item is a file and validates that the link starts with HTTP or HTTPS. If the URL isn't valid, it shows an error message. Otherwise, it calls handle item operation to perform the create or update action. In terms of keyboard handling, the component listens for the escape key to allow, allow users to close the modal quickly. That's it. We've gone over all important aspects of this project and you're now ready to go ahead and customize it. You can change the behavior of clicking on files to play videos or music or even open mini apps.
you can change the styling and make it look like Windows XP. Building Winamp skins in Tailwind would be cool, right? I think it is a really good starting place to build a Chrome extension. Make sure to send me a link to what you've built using it. Thank you for watching till the next time.